Hey guys, how's it going, Phil here? Um, I wanted to do a quick video before I go on vacation because um, Hearthstone just got a very large balance change kind of out of the blue. Um, I want to talk about the December 19th Hearthstone update, uh, what it did, how it impacts the meta uh, in the first couple days of its you know change, and what that means kind of for the future of Hearthstone because hopefully this update will kind of set a new precedent for how Blizzard wants to push out uh, balance updates. So first things first, I want to go over the cards which um, got you know changed. That makes sense to start there rather than starting anywhere else. So just going over the nerfs, uh, Wild Growth now costs three instead of two. That's pretty much just a straight nerf. Um, the only thing it potentially opens up is if you want to have like Kaliseth in your Ramp Druid for some reason, but um, Wild Growth going up in mana cost is a direct nerf. It will make ramp strategies much more slow, and um, you know that on top of the fact that Nourish also got nerfed will cause both like any kind of ramp druid shell to be a lot weaker. Um, it's not shown yet. You know we don't have enough data and enough practice with the new cards to see whether or not this change really impacts druid that much. Um, Combo Druid is still a deck, you know, there's Malagos variants, Toggle variants, Taunt Druid, stuff like that, um, that are already very slow decks, so setting them behind an extra, you know, turn or two throughout the game, um, seems very powerful, but they were already fairly slow decks, so it might not impact it as much as we think it will. So it'll be interesting to see whether Druid survives more classic nerfs, um, they, in the last, like, major update that I remember, uh, spreading play got nerfed from five to six, and you know Druid still survived through that. Um, Druid's kind of been avoiding nerfs for a long time, so it's good to see that they finally were able to hit some of these classic cards that were really strong. Um, in terms of these two cards, though, like I don't believe that they're the problem cards in Druid. I understand why they're getting nerfed because they're classic set, so they're going to be around forever. Um, you know, forever TM if they end up keeping this system that they have in place. Um, but Ramp has been in the game, you know, since Classic, since these are both Classic cards, and in no point in time, aside from when they started printing broken cards like Ultimate Infestation and Spreading Plague and Branching Paths, um, Ramp was never the most prevalent Druid strategy, you know? Like, back in Classic, GVG, TGT, I made Big Druid. I only played Big Druid. Big Druid was my deck back, back in that time, and, um... It always felt strong, but you definitely needed, you know, Wild Growth on 2, and back then Ramp was kind of more of a meme because you had stuff like Astral Communion, and basically the point I want to bring out is that I don't think, while I understand why they nerfed Classic cards, because it makes sense, because they, right now they're kind of pigeon, pigeonholing Druid into a Ramp shell, um, I do believe that after rotation, any sort of controlling Druid, if these nerfs, you know, impact Druid as a class, as much as I assume it will, because, you know, if you're bumping both of these by one, that's a lot of delay uh, compared to old Druid lists. So, I don't think that if I was a balance tester that I'd be trying to hit these ramp tools. Ramp tools have been in the game since the very beginning and have never really caused that much of an issue, aside from, you know, the past year of Druid Stone, but that's because they got so much support around them. So, I think it would have been interesting to instead... Um, just ride out Druid Stone for another like four months before rotation. Then stuff like Branching Paths and UI and Spreading Plague will all rotate out. And Branching Paths and UI are kind of the big hitters here. Like Spreading Plague is obviously a big issue. It's a really powerful card, but you can play around it somewhat. Um, giving Ramp Druid when Wild Growth was two and Nourish was five, um, the five card draw on ten was just insane. Uh, there's supposed to be a downside to ramping, and that used to be that you were in top deck mode. Stuff like Astral Communion, you discard your entire hand, you're only playing off your top. Um, and I think that it would have been interesting to keep these cards around and then try to make future cards kind of benefit that strategy more than giving Druid a bunch of just really strong tools. But I digress. Druid uh, mana ramp has been nerfed very, very heavily. Uh, Level Up is no longer an Odd Paladin card. Um, this is kind of crazy. I do think that Level Up will end up still seeing play. 
um, back in, oh god, what meta was it? I think it was Cobalts and Catacombs. Um, even Paladin was really powerful. It ran, you know, the original Call to Arms, which was four mana. It tutored out stuff like Dry Gulch Jailer so it could get the 1-1s, one and then it used uh, st the Evolved Stegadon, or the the Light Fuse Stegadon, that's what it is. The 4 mana 3-4, which adapts all of your Silver Hands. And I think that, in general, giving your Silver Hands plus 2, plus 2, and Taunt is better than the Stegadon. Uh, it, of course, you know, costs two more mana. It doesn't give you an extra body, but I do think that there's going to be some sort of shell of an even paladin that uses um, level up in future. But Odd Paladin, as we know it, is kind of dead. Um, this two-card change essentially takes, like, their burst. They, ha they didn't have much burst. They had level up and Leroy, and now they have Leroy. <laughs> so... Level up on 5 was always an issue, especially if an Odd Paladin was going 2nd, they could coin it out on 4, and if you had a level up in your opening hand, you essentially won every game, because um, it's it's just such an incredible swing. You needed cards in your deck that could specifically deal with a level up board, so you know with the new expansion, there we always had Duskbreaker in Priest, we had Arcanosaur uh, in Mage, we have... Mass Hysteria in Priest, we have Dragon Moss Scorcher, which is a neutral, but um, now that this has been nerfed, we don't need to worry about that as much, so that's kind of a mute point, but you, there were things you could do about the level up board, you know, before they were able to level up, but um, going into the late game, it, they could just at any point go Hero Power, you know, get some 1-1s out, they're going to be playing bigger threats in the late game anyway, so their 1-1s are probably going to live, and then eventually level up just becomes a giant threat again. So, it's a very difficult card to balance in Odd Paladin, where you get the two 1-1s one instead of the single 1-1 one one from your hero power, especially in combination with Lost in the Jungle, so I think that buffing this up to 6, nerfing this up to 6, however you want to put it, um, is very, very important. I do think that Odd Paladin will probably try to find a way to still survive, um, it's still a very strong, aggressive deck. It just lost a lot of its burst potential. And um, back in Boomsday, before the new cards came out, I was experimenting with more of a trolley shell on Paladin. I think something like that might be really powerful because um, there's still, you know, tokens are still incredibly strong. Uh, Hunter right now with the changes is the strongest and most prevalent class in the game. And Odd Paladin was always really good at killing Hunter. So. If there's a way to, you know, if Hunter sticks around, I think Odd Paladin will find a way to come back into relevancy. But so this got changed. That's really good. Uh, Serenite now reads Summon Another Serenite. This is good nerf, I guess. I have very mixed feelings about the Serenite nerf, um, mostly because it no longer benefits from hand buff. So that affects... Um, that affects Paladin, affects any Kalisteth deck, it affects Flabindus Floop and Token Druid, and while I think that's good, because Kalisteth's kind of degenerate, Kalisteth into Serenite was incredibly strong, um, Serenite with, in combination with Floop and Token Druid was really, really powerful, um, it, it feels bad to see, to see it get changed and to kind of lose that aspect. There's not a lot of cards, especially in Standard, which benefited from hand buffs and from Kelseth buffs in the way that Serenite did. Um, the closest card that we have now is Doppelgangster and Wild, which it's it's fairly niche is the problem. Serenite was a lot more like overall useful. So I do think that because Serenite was so prevalent in so many kinds of decks, and it was kind of degenerate in any Kelseth deck, it's good that it got changed. Um, and this also, you know, the biggest reason they did this exact change was to kill off Shutterwalk Shaman as the infinite combo version. But um, I, I'm i glad to see Shutterwalk gone. I have I had never had any interest in Shutterwalk. I thought the deck was not particularly powerful, but it just felt horrible to play against. Um, its win rate probably wasn't too good. I could look up it. I could look up on HS replay. I guarantee Shutterwalk has around like a, I don't know, 52% win rate or something. It wasn't an oppressive deck. Um, I don't believe, but it just felt so bad to play against and it kind of felt like no decision mattered. So I'm really glad they are removing those kinds of decks from the game. Um, I am sad to see that 
this was the exact change they went with though because it kind of removes the hand buff synergy but now that i've been talking about it more it it seems like it makes a lot of sense um i originally was going to talk about just how it killed shutterwalk and that's cool and how every other deck got hit and that's not cool but um as i talked about it, it turns out that a four mana three four that makes a three four so a four mana six eight with double taunt is uh really strong so it's good that this got this got hit with the nerfs uh, Luching Poison now costs 1, and Reeds give your weapon life steal this turn. This essentially makes the Kingsbane decks a lot weaker. Uh, they can no longer go infinite on life steal, which I think is good. I think that Kingsbane as an archetype is really interesting. Making a giant weapon is really cool. Being able to evade fatigue with your giant weapon through the use of Valir the Hol Hollow is very, very interesting. And I do think that this change is very obviously for the better. Um, once you got into the late game against the Kingsbane deck, they were able to heal up for, you know, upwards of 6, 10, 12 damage a turn, and most decks don't have a way to deal with that. But with it being at 1, um, you're still able to build up your big weapon, you can get a big swing turn of life gain, because you can Leeching Poison, hit something, Doomerang, um, and then, you know, that's two procs of your healing which should be enough um to get you through and make a big swing but not it removes the idea that you have made it to the late game with this lifesteal weapon and you can no longer be killed through like minion damage and that's really really important i do think the kingsbane will survive um there are more aggressive kingsbane pirate lists popping up every day that was a very common deck in the first couple days of the rustcon's rumble meta where stuff like raiding party captain green skin south sea captain um you know that pirate package got a lot of additional tools this expansion with captain hook tusk and can barrage and stuff like that i think that king's bane pirate rogue is still a very viable deck because it didn't run leeching poison in the first place and i think that for the infinite lifesteal weapon um remo removal of you know that tool from the control king's bane archetype is really really good so i'm very happy with this nerf um and that's all of the nerfs that we have so overall um i don't have too many gripes about the nerfs i think leeching poison was the best like one of the best possible changes they could have made i think serenite uh is again very very powerful definitely a change that i'm happy to see um level up it got it removed it from the odd paladin arsenal which is very important because that's where it was oppressive and i think that it will eventually see play in a uh even paladin list or eventually you know it might just come out that paladin without even or odd is better i don't see that being very likely but um that could always pop up too so this is a good change and then uh, when it comes to the mana ramp i do think that there are more elegant solutions to changing druid but I'm not upset. I understand the rationale between wanting to nerf classic cards because it means that um, they have more room to work with in future. So I'm a little disappointed to see the ramp go. I don't think ramp was the issue, but I digress. This is what happened. And it seems like it's going to shake up the meta quite a bit because this nerf set hit combo druids. Combo druids were incredibly powerful hit Odd Paladin, the most oppressive aggressive deck. It hit Shutterwalk, which, you know, cool. Everyone hates Shutterwalk. It also mildly nerfs other decks. And then this removes the uninteractable Kingsbane, um, like, control -y lists. Now, I say uninteractable. You could, in Warlock, go, like, Gluttonous Ooze or Weapon Removal, and then Gnome Feratu, this, like, once it's the only card in their deck, whatever. Very fringe case. Um, most decks were not able to deal with this weapon, so I'm very glad to see this change. Now, what I want to do with the rest of this video is look at five of the most popular decks pre-nerf, so that we know, um, you know, in the first week of Rumble, what was really powerful that also is heavily affected by the nerfs, and then I'll also, you know, touch on the fact that Hunter is the best class in the game <laughs> um it was the best class in the game coming into rumble or one of it was the best class during the beginning weeks of rumble 
and now with these nerfs, uh, it dodged all nerfs, so it's still one of the strongest classes in the game. But I want to look at the decks that got nerfed so that we have these, um, you know, just saved somewhere. You can always look back at this, see what the meta was like, give some context to older videos, and also helps going forward, it helps us think about what cards in future may be oppressive in decks. Um, cause I, I don't think, you know, every, every player is able to identify, Hey, this deck's really strong. What cards are consistently making this, you know, just slightly above the curve of how powerful we want something to be. So I think doing this exercise is going to be good. Um, this is a very typical control Kingsbane list. It runs rating party, rating party to tutor out the Dread Corsairs, the Captain Green Sin, and also your Kingsbane. It runs double cavern shiny finder. Um, many lists were cutting this down to one because with the double rating party, that's more tutor for your weapon. But this was a fairly standard list. Uh, essentially, your game plan is get to the late game, survive early, buff up your Kingsbane, and then life steal it with what used to be the two mana leeching poison, and then just you know win back the board and get through, get your health gain like that. You have cards like prep to prep out sprints to get card draw, prep out vanish if you really need it. Prepping blade flurry was really powerful because your weapon gets really really high attack. And Blade Flurry became better now that you had more recursion effects to tutor out your Kingsbane. So it used to be a fringe fringe inclusion in this deck, uh, just because you only had two Cavern Shiny Finders to try and find your weapon again. But now that you had, you know, potentially two Cavern Shiny Finders and two Raiding Parties, that's a lot of chances for you to be to be able to um, Blade Flurry and then get your weapon back. So that was cool. Um, this deck was incredibly strong. Uh, and I do think that even with this nerf, it's still potentially very good. Um, I just, it kind of remains to be seen how important the lifesteal really was. Because it was very oppressive. It obviously was a reason why you won some matchups. Um, but it's, I don't have enough data yet to be able to say whether or not the loss of that is still enough to make the deck bad because you still get to be able to do swing turns with the leeching poisons which help you in more you know mid-range aggro matchups and uh, against control it means that they have you know they have an out against you you can't just inf go infinite against them so i do think the kingsbane rogue will survive the nerf especially the more aggressive variants and this deck you know you can probably just pop off play right now and it's still fairly strong odd paladin uh, is no longer Odd Paladin, because level up now costs 6, but um, this is a very generic list. It runs Prince Liam for whatever reason, um, and it's your quintessential Odd Paladin, so you spam out tokens, and you just won by having basically infinite threats, because eventually your 1-1s one that you get for free, you get to buff up with level up, Fungal Mancer, Unidentified Maul, Vine Cleaver, or not Vine Cleaver, Stormwind Champion, stuff like that. So you just had infinite gas, essentially and not many decks can deal with two one ones every turn in addition to whatever else you're playing so i'm kind of glad to see at least odd paladin lose a very big tool and level up but i do think that odd paladin as a deck will still remain it just needs to find a way to you know make up for the burst that it lost i'm not exactly sure what card that is yet but it'll be interesting to see what people decide to try out and then going into these, some combo druids, which got hit with the nerfs. So uh, wild growth on three for Malagos Druid, Nourish on six. Malagos Druid was the strongest combo archetype, I believe, of Druid um, coming into Rastakhan's and in the first week of Rastakhan's. So it's good to see that this got hit. I do still think that Malagos Druid will be a threat, um, but it definitely got a little bit weaker. This list I randomly pulled is a little bit weird. Um, this MC tech's not super common anymore. Um, I saw some lists running only one spreading. I don't see much Alex Strauss anymore. But point being, Combo Druid essentially just gets a lot slower, so that's good. And then Taunt Druid. Taunt Druid, um, there's arguments right now whether the Undertaker or the Cube Witching Hour package is better. I was very vehemently against the Witching Hour Cube package uh, during the first week of the expansion, simply because I think that in Taunt Druid being able to run uh, Malfurion the Pestilent and Spreading Plague is more valuable than being able to go Witching Hour Cube. 
but both are very, very strong. I do think that kind of a hybrid list is probably the best way to go, and it's going to be the way that the list eventually ends up going, um, simply because you get the best of both worlds. You can go Master Oakheart into stuff like Moshog Enforcer, um, and then you get the infinite recursion with the Undertaker if you so need that. Um, so Tauntrid, probably still strong. It didn't get hit nearly as hard because in Taunt Druid, Nourish wasn't as big of a deal as it was in uh, Maligos because in Maligos you have like an actual damage combo you're working towards. So being able to draw for cheaper to be able to then you know combo spells together in one turn uh, was a lot stronger. In Taunt Druid, it's not as big a deal, but we'll see. I do think the Druid will definitely survive these nerfs. It just feels really bad in the first day or two of the you know, the nerfed metagame to be playing Druid, simply because it got changed so drastically. Um, the last deck I wanted to bring up was Cloning Gallery Priest. This deck avoided all nerfs, um, which is good. It's definitely not an oppressive deck, but I do think that with the nerfs, it got considerably weaker. Um, it's still pretty good, because you can... Now that Druid is, quote, like out of the game, because it just got nerfed so no one really wants to play it yet. Um, there's not as much armor to deal with in the metagame, so your burst goes a lot further. But you also lost a very good matchup in Odd Paladin. I had like a 90% win rate versus Odd Paladin with this deck, uh, especially in lists where I ran double Spirit Lash instead of just one. Um, this style of Resurrect Priest is still very powerful, so I just wanted to bring it up to kind of showcase, you know, we were going through decks that were very good pre- uh, nerf metagame. I do expect this deck to still be strong, but it was definitely a major contender um, during my climb, and it was a deck that I had like a very good amount of success, success with in the first two weeks of Rust Counts Rumble before this uh, change went into place. Uh, aside from that, the best decks currently with you know the introduction of these nerfs are any variant of, variant of Hunter, um, I've decided to showcase Spell Hunter because I believe that out of Spell Hunter, Death Rattle Hunter, Recruit Hunter, Big Secret Hunter, Secret Hunter, all those different lists, uh, Spell Hunter is the most powerful simply because Zul'jin is one of the best cards ever created, um, especially in Hunter, which has very good, surprisingly good controlling tools. They're not great by themselves. But when you get to cast them again for free later on, it gives them an incredible amount of value. So stuff like Deadly Shot, you get to kill a minion instantly. Cool. But in the late game, when you play Zul'jin, you get to kill another minion. And in the late game, you know, there's less threats. There's more very big minions. So that has a very good chance of hitting something uh, very impactful. It also introduces Crushing Walls to the Spellhunter arsenal because you're able to get value out of it when you initially play it. And then when you play your Zul'jin, uh, you get to kill potentially two more minions. Very, very strong. It gives Hunter a um, late-game board clear. And if that wasn't good enough, if you don't think a late-game board clear that also casts some random damaging spells and secrets and trackings was good enough, um, you can also get a full board through the use of Animal Companions, Lesser Emerald Spellstones, To My Sides, and sometimes flanking Strike and Baited Arrow. Um, so, essentially, Zul'jin being 10 mana clear the enemy board, give yourself a full board, and a complete Christmas tree of secrets uh, is really powerful. So I don't expect Spellhunter to be leaving the metagame. It's currently, I would say, the strongest deck uh, post-nerf, and other Hunter archetypes are good, but if you're running if you're running Hunter without Zul'jin, you're doing something wrong. Um, there is no reason to not be running Secret Hunter at this at this point in the metagame. It is very obviously the strongest and um, most powerful deck. It's also f very, very consistent because your secrets impact like aggressive decks, so explosive is AoE. Freezing is cool. Wandering gives you, you know, a three drop for two mana. That's really powerful. We've seen cards I'm surprised that a card like Wandering Monster ever got printed after we saw that uh Avenge in Seeker Paladin was kind of oppressive because it turns out a one mana three two is really good and a two mana random three drop is almost always very very good. Um and you just have a lot of you know clear 
and you just essentially live to either Rexar and play zombies, or Zol'jin when, uh, you know, they finally start to turn the game around. So once they have two, three, four minions, and you don't have a board, you just slam Zol'jin, and you reset all their progress, you get a full board, and then they have to be able to deal with that that turn, otherwise they lose. Um, so Spell Hunter is definitely the king of Rosticons right now. I don't expect that to change, and uh, yeah. That's kind of how the December 19th update to Hearthstone impacted the metagame. And my final point before I end the video is I want to talk about how this change is both good and bad. Um, obviously, this change was announced on December 18th, and then the changes went into effect December 19th. So lots of players woke up to having, you know, tons of their best, best and favorite decks completely changed. And there's been an ongoing debate ever since the game first released on how Blizzard addresses balance changes. So in the past, you know, cards would be let let go, and like you could just play whatever you want, even if it was really powerful. Occasionally, the devs would be like, "Hey, this is strong. We're looking into it," and then it would take like months at a time for balance changes to go through, like their development process of, okay, this looks like an actual problem, or like, we're watching this as a pro as a potential problem, it became a problem, we found a solution, we're pushing, we're pushing the solution to live. And that was a very long process, and it meant that a lot of the time, um, like, you were playing against the same decks that you knew were oppressive because the dev team told you, hey, this is really strong, we're currently looking at how to, quote, remove it, so that it's not as oppressive anymore. And uh, that made playing against those decks feel even worse, because you're like, oh, well, one, I'm losing, that feels bad. Two, I'm losing to a deck that's really strong, that I know is really strong, that feels bad. And three, I know that this deck is eventually going to be changed, which makes this loss feel even worse. So I do think that with Hearthstone being a digital card game, it's very important that you are able to do these like almost instantaneous balance changes and I do like the precedent that this sets, that um, Blizzard is now okay with being like, this is an issue, we're solving this issue now, come play our game. Because I think that that's going to overall be better for the health of Hearthstone. However, it did feel really bad to be mid, like in the middle of a legend climb. I'm at rank 2, I was farming with Maligos Druid. I woke up the next day and all of a sudden my deck became a lot worse. Uh, with almost no, like, warning. So I do think that um, this precedent of becoming more of a digital card game, as Reddit likes to say, they're like, oh, it's digital, so you can just change cards whenever, you don't have to reprint, it doesn't cost money, blah, blah, blah. I think that this is a good step in that direction. I do think that it'd be good to still give players... Um, you know, a week's notice, a couple days notice at least, so they can still um, play play the decks they want to play before they rotate out, um, or get changed, you know, wording there, whatever. Um, and it also means that you have a little bit of time to theorycraft what the meta is going to be like, so right now these changes went live, and the best deck was already Spell Hunter, and it dodged nerf, so everyone's like, oh, well, my deck's got nerf, let's just go play Spell Hunter. Um, if we had a couple days to kind of think about how these changes might affect things, uh, new decks might be able to sprout up faster, uh, which is important. And again, I think that giving players a, about a week's time to happen to find the news post that says, hey, these are changing, kind of get that into their brain like, oh man, my deck's going to go away, that's okay, it's important, blah blah blah. Um, you need to give players time to process information. Um, Instant balance changes are cool, but there was nothing more infuriating than logging on. I I got off at like, I don't know, 1 in the morning, came back on at like 11 o'clock in the same morning, and then the deck that I was using 10 hours ago no longer functioned. And um, that, that needs to be addressed. I think there's a middle ground between waiting two months to change cards and waiting a day to change cards that needs to be... Uh, found and addressed by Blizzard. Especially because there's people that run tournaments, there's people that run online leagues, and um, springing balance changes 
instantly can really affect those kinds of situations. Um, WSOE women's was, I'm not sure if the W and WSOE stands for women's anyway, but this, there was a women's tournament that was happening um, and decks were being submitted, decks were already submitted, and then balance changes hit and they're like, oh shit, we have about, you know, 24 hours to get everybody to resubmit decks and be prepared to play this tournament. And that kind of sucks. It makes, you know, for an interesting tournament metagame, whatever, that's kind of cool because things are different, so you have to bring new stuff, blah, blah, blah. But um, that was a very high-profile example of why this instant change can be bad. In a more lower-term example, one of my friends, uh, we were both doing our Legend Climb together, and he had a tournament on Thursday. Uh, this is being recorded on Saturday, by the way, Saturday the 21st. So he had a tournament on Thursday, the 19th, and we were practicing on Wednesday, you know, refining his list, figuring out what he's bringing, and then we read about the nerfs, and everything we had just practiced for no longer counted, and he had to change everything up with no notice uh, to try and go into, you know, this tournament, which had a decent prize pool, and so that feels really, really bad to put a lot of time and effort into practicing, making sure you're ready and prepared, and then having uh, essentially the entire metagame flipped. Because out of his four decks he was bringing, two of them got nerfed, one of them got slightly nerfed because uh, it was very strong versus Druid, which got heavily nerfed. And his only deck, which he ended up still bringing, was Spell Hunter, because turns out Spell Hunter dodged all the nerfs and is really incredibly powerful. So. To and like in conclusion, um, the balance changes that went into effect are very good. Uh, it removed some oppressive tools. It opens up design space for Druid. It removes some oppressive decks like Shutterwalk Shaman and Infinite Lifesteal Kingsbane, control archetypes of Kingsbane Rogue, and it also helps hit more aggressive decks. Um, Odd Paladin, as we know, it is essentially dead, and lots of decks which use Keleseth, um are now going to be nerfed because of the Serenite interaction, and that's really good. So for the last, you know, four months of Keleseth's life cycle, it won't be as powerful. Uh, I still expect to see Keleseth everywhere, but at least it's not hitting Chain Gang, because Keleseth into Chain Gang into, like, another Chain Gang was essentially the best draw you could have as a mid-range aggro deck. So that's cool to see that go away. I think that... In future, this kind of update is better than the updates in the past, which took several months to get implemented. But I do think that there needs to be more of a middle ground between instant, like instantaneous changes and waiting two months to implement changes. So thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And... Uh, in the description box below, there's a link to the Discord. If you want to join the Discord, we do coaching, um, community, stuff like that. It's just kind of fun. Um, if you're interested, go on and click that. And then this will probably be the last video until uh, December 27th-ish, December 27th, 28th, because um, I will be going to, uh, I'll be out of state for the next you know week. So yeah. Thanks for checking this out. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I missed anything that you thought I should have talked about. I can always make a little, um, you know, revised edition or a little, like, side piece uh, if there's a point that I missed that was very, very important. And, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys next time.